Working with Leo was really, really amazing. And, and we had to be very, very close because we had to be so hard on each other. Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio set screens ablaze with their chemistry and Titanic. But behind those steamy scenes, things weren't always as effortless as they looked. Winslet recently revealed that filming intimate moments with DiCaprio wasn't just about acting. It was so much more. Titanic 1997 the dawn of an iconic on-screen pairing. When Titanic hit theaters in 1997, it wasn't just a movie, it was an event. At the heart of this epic film were two young stars, Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio, whose portrayals of Jack and Rose catapulted them to worldwide fame. Now it's easy to forget that back then, neither Kate nor Leo was the big name they are today. They were young actors just stepping into the limelight, both looking to make a mark, and they ended up becoming part of one of the most iconic love stories ever told on film. Kate and Leo's paths crossed for the first time on the set of Titanic, and from that moment on, movie magic was inevitable. As Rose, Kate was tasked with bringing to life a character bound by the expectations of society, desperate to break free, and yearning for a love that felt real. Leo, as Jack, was everything Rose wasn't allowed to be, free-spirited, spontaneous, and full of life. Their chemistry was electric right from the start, and you could see it in every scene they shared. It was like they were born to play these roles, which is wild when you think about how young they were and how big of a project they were stepping into. They were just two kids who wanted to make something unforgettable, and they did. I don't think there's a single person who's watched Titanic and not had that moment seared into their memory. The setup was simple enough. Jack and Rose steal away for some alone time in a car, hidden from the rest of the world. But that's the thing about simplicity. It leaves room for something really raw and genuine to unfold. The scene starts innocently, with Jack and Rose sharing shy glances and nervous smiles. But then, as they lean into each other, it shifts into something deeply intimate. It's not just about physical closeness. It's about two souls connecting, pushing past every boundary society has set up around them. What makes this scene so powerful is that it feels incredibly real. There's no rush, no over-the-top music to tell you how to feel. Just two young people sharing a moment that means the world to them. The car windows fog up. The air feels thick with anticipation. And then there's that unforgettable shot of Leo's hand sliding down the glass, leaving a trail behind. It's raw, it's intense, and it's a little bit taboo. It feels like you're intruding on something private, but at the same time you can't look away. For parents back then, though, that scene was a whole other story. Titanic wasn't just a love story. It was a story of youthful rebellion and the defiance of social norms, and Jack and Rose's love scene was at the heart of that. For a lot of families, this was a big deal, especially with the movie's PG-13 rating. It sparked debates in living rooms everywhere. Was this the kind of thing kids should be watching? Would they understand the complexity of what was happening, or would they just see it as an intense love scene? It wasn't just about the physical aspect. It was about Rose breaking free from the life she was expected to lead and choosing love on her own terms. On the surface, the scene was just a moment of passion, but it spoke to so much more. Here was Rose, someone who had always been controlled and told what to do, finally making a choice for herself. She wasn't just falling for Jack. She was stepping into her own power, defying the world that told her who she should be. And boy, did James Cameron know how to capture that. The cinematography was stunning. Every shot was deliberate, from the close-ups that made you feel like you were right there with them to the misty windows that hinted at the intimacy they shared. Cameron's directing choices amplified the intensity of the moment, too. The way he lingered on the couple's faces, letting the emotions play out, made it feel more real than any dialogue ever could. And the music, that hauntingly beautiful score by James Horner, added layers of emotion that words could never touch. It was like a dance, every element coming together to create a moment that felt timeless. 
It's no wonder that people still talk about it to this day, decades later. As for Kate, well, filming that scene was no small feat for her. This was early in her career, remember, and she was bearing her soul and a lot more on screen for millions to see. But Kate Winslet isn't one to shy away from a challenge. In interviews, she's reflected on how intense it was, but also how liberating. She was stepping into a role that demanded vulnerability, that asked her to strip down not just physically, but emotionally. It was raw and, yes, probably uncomfortable at times, but it was also a defining moment for her as an actress. This was the film that would catapult her into stardom, that would mark her as one of the most talented actresses of her generation. And she rose to the occasion brilliantly. You can see it in the way she looks at Leo during that scene. There's a tenderness, a longing, but also a strength. It's like Rose is finally allowing herself to feel, to be vulnerable, and Kate brought that to life in a way that was both beautiful and heartbreaking. She said that, looking back, there were moments where she was nervous, where she wondered if she was doing it right, if it was coming across as genuine. But she trusted herself, trusted Leo, and trusted Cameron to guide her through it. And the result was nothing short of magical. That scene, that one simple, intimate moment, encapsulated so much of what Titanic was about. Love, defiance, and the willingness to take a leap of faith no matter the cost. For Kate and Leo, it was the start of a lifelong friendship, a bond that would see them through more films, more challenges, and more moments of cinematic history. And for us, the audience, it was a moment that reminded us why we fall in love with movies in the first place. The years between, developing a platonic friendship. When Titanic became a global sensation, Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio were suddenly the center of attention. It's hard to even grasp the level of fame that came their way after the movie. They weren't just actors anymore, they were Jack and Rose, the couple that everyone wanted to believe in. Fans across the world were not only captivated by the love story on screen, but also curious, if not outright convinced, that there must be something going on between Kate and Leo off screen. For years, the media had a field day speculating about their relationship. Were they dating? Secretly in love? Was their chemistry too good to be fake? Kate and Leo's on-screen connection was so electric that, naturally, people assumed there had to be more to it. The paparazzi followed their every move, waiting for any hint of romance. And sure, they'd be seen together from time to time, whether at premieres or catching up over lunch, which only fueled the rumors. But the truth was, as they would both later confirm, there was no romantic relationship between them. Kate and Leo were just really good friends who happened to work brilliantly together on screen. But in a world obsessed with Hollywood romances, that explanation was never quite enough. Over the years, Kate and Leo each went through their own personal highs and lows, and their friendship stayed solid through it all. They both got married, Kate even twice, and had families. DiCaprio, on his part, had a series of high-profile relationships that kept the tabloids busy. Meanwhile, Winslet was navigating her own life, balancing her career with motherhood and dealing with the struggles of fame. Through it all, they remained close friends, the kind who could pick up the phone and talk whenever they needed each other. While they each had their own circles and families, their friendship became a constant in the ever-changing chaos of Hollywood life. It wasn't like they were attached at the hip. They weren't always in each other's lives. But when they did reconnect, it was like no time had passed at all. That's the thing about Kate and Leo's friendship. It's built on mutual respect genuine affection, and a shared understanding of what they'd gone through together. They both understood what Titanic had done for their lives and careers, and they both understood the pressures that came with that kind of fame. It wasn't something that anyone else could fully understand, and that's part of what kept their bond so strong. The public, however, seemed to have a hard time letting go of the idea that Jack and Rose were more than just a movie. Even years after Titanic, whenever they were spotted together, rumors would bubble up again. Fans wanted so badly for them to be a real-life couple. But Kate was always quick to shut down those rumors. In interviews, she would laugh about it, 
often saying that Leo felt more like a brother to her than anything else. She'd talk about how they had this easy, almost sibling-like relationship, and how Leo had always been there for her, not as a lover, but as a friend. Kate's insistence on their platonic bond was often met with surprise. How could two people with such amazing chemistry on screen not have any romantic feelings for each other? It seemed impossible. But Kate never wavered. She was firm about what Leo meant to her, and it was clear that their friendship was something she treasured deeply. It wasn't about romance. It was about having someone who understood her completely, someone she could trust without any strings attached. For her, that was even more valuable than any on-screen love story. By the time they reunited for Revolutionary Road, it was clear to everyone that their connection was genuine, but not in the way people wanted to believe. They were each other's biggest cheerleaders, supporting one another through everything life threw at them. Theirs was a friendship that had stood the test of time, and it was built on a foundation of shared experiences, mutual respect, and, yes, a little bit of the magic that only Hollywood could provide. Revolutionary Road, 2008, A Different Kind of Chemistry By the time Revolutionary Road came along in 2008, Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio were well into their careers, each with their share of accolades and memorable roles. But this movie was going to be a far cry from Titanic. Where Titanic was filled with hope and youthful passion, Revolutionary Road would get headfirst into the darker side of love, its disillusionments, the frustrations, and the realities that come with a crumbling marriage. Winslet and DiCaprio were reunited, not as the star-crossed lovers everyone knew them as, but as a couple at war with each other in a suburban nightmare. This wasn't going to be another sweeping love story. This was a gritty, raw look at two people falling apart. The film follows Frank and April Wheeler, a couple living in 1950s suburbia who at first glance seem to have the perfect life. But underneath the pristine exterior, there's turmoil. Frank is dissatisfied with his corporate job, and April is a frustrated housewife longing for something more. They both dream of a different life, but the weight of unfulfilled dreams and the monotony of everyday life slowly eats away at their love. It's a tale of a marriage unraveling, of dreams deferred, and of a desperation that hits way too close to home for a lot of people. For Winslet and DiCaprio, this meant stepping into characters that were far from the starry-eyed romantics they played in Titanic. Here, they were going to be bitter, angry, and lost, and they both dove into these roles with everything they had. But there was an extra layer of complexity to this for Winslet. You see, Revolutionary Road was directed by Sam Mendes, Winslade's husband at the time. Imagine being in Winslade's shoes. Not only did she have to share intense emotional scenes with a close friend, but her husband was the one calling the shots. Mendes was there, directing every scene between her and DiCaprio, and that included the intimate ones. It added a level of tension that was hard to ignore, not just for Winslade, but for everyone involved. Winslade has spoken about how strange and awkward it was for her. On one hand, she was a professional. This was her job, and she knew what it took to make these scenes work. But on the other, there was this constant awareness that Mendez was watching, guiding her through moments that were incredibly intimate, not just emotionally, but physically. She said there were times when she'd look up, see her husband behind the camera, and be thrown off. It was a mental juggling act, trying to stay in character, to be April Wheeler in that moment, while also being Kate Winslet, aware of the fact that her husband was right there, witnessing it all. For Mendez, too, this couldn't have been easy. He wasn't just any director on set. He was married to his lead actress, and he had to maintain that professional distance, directing his wife as though she were any other actor. But, of course, there was no denying the personal stakes. He had to find a balance between being a director who gets the best performance out of his actors and a husband who knows his wife is working through some deeply challenging material. There were layers upon layers of complexity in every scene they shot, and Winslade had to navigate all of that while staying true to April's story. And yet, despite these challenges, Winslade delivered an incredible performance. 
she poured everything into the role, channeling every bit of discomfort, tension, and frustration into her portrayal of April. The result was raw and intense, with scenes that felt almost too real, like you were watching something private and painful. It's a testament to Winslade's talent and professionalism that she could manage to bring so much depth to a character while dealing with such awkward circumstances. She was able to separate Kate, the person, from April, the character, and give an honest portrayal of a woman who was unraveling before our eyes. What's fascinating is how this strange dynamic may have actually enhanced her performance. The discomfort Winslade felt while filming those scenes likely added a layer of authenticity to April's story. April is a woman trapped in a life she can't stand, desperate to escape, but unsure of how. Winslade was living that tension in real life, albeit for very different reasons, and that energy bled into her portrayal, making it all the more visceral. You can see it in her eyes, in the way she holds herself, in the rawness that comes through in every argument and every scene of quiet desperation. The intimate scenes with DiCaprio, which should have been the most familiar part of the film for her, became some of the most difficult because of the circumstances. It wasn't the first time she'd acted opposite Leo in love scenes, but this time there was no illusion of romance. They were playing a couple that was falling apart and she was doing it under the gaze of her husband. Winslade has admitted that those scenes were particularly tough, and who could blame her? There's something uniquely vulnerable about bearing your soul and your body on screen, but to do so with someone you see as a friend, while your husband is directing, takes that vulnerability to another level. Despite all this, Winslade managed to balance the demands of the role with her own personal boundaries. She didn't let the strangeness of the situation pull her away from what she needed to do. Instead, she used it. She channeled that awkwardness, that sense of being pulled in different directions, into her performance. It's why April's story resonates so deeply. You feel every ounce of her frustration, her yearning for something more, and her despair as she realizes that life isn't going to turn out the way she'd hoped. Winslade and DiCaprio's Unbreakable Bond Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio share a unique bond that few could have predicted when they first met on the set of Titanic. Initially, they were simply two young actors thrown together in a film that would become a global phenomenon. But somewhere between those first takes and the final wrap, something special happened. A friendship formed that would last for decades. While fans around the world saw them as the ultimate romantic pair, Kate and Leo saw something different in each other. They didn't fall in love. They became family. Over the years, Winslet has often described DiCaprio as the brother I never had. And it's not just a casual label. For them, it's a deep, genuine connection that has outlasted the spotlight and the tabloids. What's interesting is how this sibling-like bond took shape over time. It wasn't as if they walked under the set of Titanic and decided to be platonic. The chemistry they shared on screen as Jack and Rose felt undeniably real to the audience. And that's a testament to their acting talent. They shared some of the most iconic scenes in film history. And yet, behind the camera, a different story was unfolding. As they navigated the fame that came with Titanic, they leaned on each other, forming a partnership that had nothing to do with romance. Instead, they became each other's confidants, their go-to person in the chaos of Hollywood. For Kate and Leo, their relationship wasn't about grand gestures or headline-grabbing moments. It was built on small things, laughter on set, shared jokes, and mutual respect. They went through the intense Titanic experience together, and that alone created a bond that was hard to break. After Titanic, they could have easily drifted apart like so many co-stars do. But instead, they stayed close. They were each other's support system, a constant in a world that was anything but. And as they continued with their careers, that bond only deepened, transforming from co-stars to what Kate would eventually call siblings. Fans, however, struggled to accept this version of their relationship. For years, people wanted Kate and Leo to be more than friends, 
They were the Romeo and Juliet of the 90s, the couple that audiences wanted to believe in. Every time they were seen together at an award show or a red carpet, rumors would start up again. The public couldn't understand how two people with such incredible on-screen chemistry could really just be friends. And when Kate referred to Leo as her brother, some fans were downright disappointed. They'd been holding on to the hope that one day, maybe, Jack and Rose would become a real-life love story. But Kate and Leo didn't let the public's expectations affect their bond. They knew what they meant to each other, and they were content with that. There's something powerful about the way they've always supported one another, with no need to define their relationship in a way that fits Hollywood's narrative. In interviews, you can see the way they talk about each other, the warmth in Kate's voice when she calls Leo her brother, or the way Leo describes her as his closest friend. It's clear they have a bond that goes beyond the usual Hollywood friendship, a connection that has stood the test of time, despite the constant rumors and the public's desire for something more. And it's not hard to see why fans were so invested in the idea of Kate and Leo as a couple. Titanic was, after all, a love story that captured the hearts of millions. Jack and Rose were everything a romantic pairing should be, passionate, loyal, and willing to risk it all for each other. Their love story was intense, tragic, and timeless, and it made people believe in the kind of love that could last forever. For fans who saw that film and felt that connection, it was hard to separate the actors from their characters. It's almost like they wanted to believe that if Jack and Rose couldn't be together on screen, at least Kate and Leo could find that happiness in real life. But Kate and Leo's real-life bond as siblings might just be even better than the romance fans wanted. There's something comforting about knowing that two people can have such a deep connection without the need for romantic labels. It's a reminder that friendships can be just as profound, just as meaningful, as any love story. In a way, their friendship is a love story, but it's a love story built on trust, respect, and a shared history that only they fully understand. When you watch Kate and Leo together, whether they're presenting at the Oscars or just goofing around in interviews, it's clear that they're more than just co-stars. They're each other's chosen family, a relationship that has weathered the highs and lows of Hollywood and come out stronger. It's a rare thing in their world where relationships often seem fleeting and superficial. But Kate and Leo have shown that a bond built on genuine affection can last a lifetime. For Kate and Leo, their connection isn't defined by Titanic alone. It's about the moments in between, the phone calls, the shared memories, the support they offer each other through life's ups and downs. And while they may never be the romantic couple fans wished for, they've become something even more enduring. Their friendship is a testament to the idea that love comes in many forms, and sometimes the love between friends is the most powerful kind of all. Behind the scenes secrets and shared experiences on Titanic. Working on Titanic wasn't just another movie experience for Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio. It was an adventure, a challenge, and at times a pure test of endurance. It's almost hard to believe now, knowing what a massive hit the film became, but back then, there was no guarantee this movie would even succeed. They were filming on a massive set, day in and day out, often for hours on end, dealing with the freezing waters and the grueling schedules. The conditions were tough and the pressure was intense, but through all of that, Kate and Leo found a way to not just survive, but to thrive bonding over the shared hardships and experiences. There's something about facing difficult situations together that brings people closer, and that's exactly what happened with Kate and Leo. From the start, the Titanic set was a challenging place to be. Director James Cameron was known for his demanding ways, and the entire production was running on a tightrope, balancing on a budget that was growing by the day. Everyone on set was feeling the strain, but Kate and Leo had each other to lean on. They would goof around between takes, make each other laugh, and find ways to lighten the mood, even when the atmosphere on set was far from light. There were times when they'd spend entire days in the water, 
shivering and exhausted. But those shared moments only deepened their friendship. They were in it together, and that made all the difference. As if the grueling conditions weren't enough, there were a few surprising twists on set that kept everyone on their toes. For instance, there was this one infamous incident involving spiked drinks that has become part of Titanic lore. On the last day of shooting, someone spiked the crew's soup with a hallucinogenic drug and chaos ensued. People were stumbling around laughing, crying, completely out of sorts. It was as if the entire set had gone off the rails. While it sounds like something out of a movie itself, it was a bizarre, unforgettable end to what had already been a whirlwind experience. The culprit was never found, but the incident became a running joke among the cast and crew, a strange little footnote in the making of Titanic. Beyond the peculiar pranks, there were real, tangible pressures weighing on everyone involved. The movie's budget was skyrocketing, costing about a million dollars per minute of finished film. With that kind of money at stake, every single scene had to count, and everyone, from Cameron to the cast, knew it. The stakes were high, and the pressure was enough to break even the most seasoned actors. But Kate and Leo managed to find solace in each other. They were both young, both trying to make their mark, and having each other there made it a little easier to handle the weight of the production. They would talk about their dreams, their fears, and the madness of Hollywood, all while navigating one of the most ambitious projects of their lives. In the midst of all this, Leo still managed to bring a bit of levity to the set thanks to his unusual pet, a lizard. Yes, Leo brought his pet lizard with him to the Titanic set and it became something of a mascot. He'd let it crawl around on him during breaks, and Kate would watch, sometimes a bit wary, but always amused. It's a strange image, isn't it? Leonardo DiCaprio, the heartthrob of Titanic, hanging out with a lizard on his shoulder between takes. But that's part of what made the set feel less like a pressure cooker, and more like a place where they could still be themselves, even if just for a moment. For Kate, it was these small, light-hearted moments that helped her stay grounded, and for Leo, it was a way to bring a piece of his world into the chaos. And then there's the story of the famous nude portrait. You know the one, Jack sketches Rose, and that drawing becomes a symbol of their connection. Well, here's the twist. James Cameron, the film's director, actually did the drawing himself. That's right. When you see that sketch on screen, you're looking at Cameron's own handiwork. It's a small detail, but it adds another layer to the story. Cameron was known for being hands-on, and this was just one more way he put himself into the film. For Kate, knowing that it was Cameron's work probably made the moment even more surreal. She was bearing herself not just for Leo, who she trusted completely, but also for Cameron's artistic vision. These behind-the-scenes moments are more than just interesting trivia. They're glimpses into the reality of making a film like Titanic. It wasn't all glamorous, it was messy, challenging, and often unpredictable. But for Kate and Leo, it was also the start of something lasting. Those shared struggles, the late nights, the odd pranks, and the intense days on set all came together to create a bond that went beyond co-stars. They didn't just make a movie, they forged a friendship that would last a lifetime. Looking back, it's clear that Titanic was more than just a film for Kate and Leo. It was a rite of passage, a formative experience that shaped who they would become as actors and as friends. Through the tough conditions and the bizarre twists, they found a way to make it through together. And that's what makes their bond so special. It wasn't built on the glossy surface of Hollywood fame. It was built on the foundation of shared challenges, strange incidents, and the simple act of being there for each other when it mattered most. Winslade's evolution as an actress. Stepping out of her comfort zone. After Titanic, Kate Winslet could have easily coasted on the success of her role as Rose, taking on similar characters and sticking to the safety of mainstream cinema. But Winslade is anything but predictable. From the very beginning, she's been drawn to roles that challenge her, 
roles that force her to step out of her comfort zone and explore the messy, complex realities of life. This drive has shaped her career in ways that have kept her relevant and respected as one of the most versatile actresses of her generation. She didn't want to be just another Hollywood star, she wanted to be an artist. One of the most compelling examples of this came with Revolutionary Road. For Winslade, this was more than just a role, it was a deep dive into the intricacies of a troubled marriage. April Wheeler, her character, is trapped in a life that feels suffocating, weighed down by the monotony of suburban existence and a love that's slowly crumbling. The role demanded vulnerability and a willingness to confront the darkest corners of a relationship. Winslade approached the character with raw honesty, bringing a depth to April that made the unraveling of her marriage heartbreakingly real. But Revolutionary Road came with its own set of unique challenges. This wasn't just any movie. Winslade was working under the direction of her then-husband, Sam Mendes, which added an extra layer of complexity. Here she was, playing a woman whose marriage was falling apart while her real-life husband was directing every scene. That had to be strange, right? Winslade has admitted that it was. There were moments when she'd catch herself thinking, my husband is right there, guiding me through these intensely personal scenes. It took a kind of emotional juggling that few actors could manage, but Winslade poured every bit of discomfort and tension into her performance. In the end, she created a portrayal that was raw, unfiltered, and deeply human. But Winslade wasn't done pushing boundaries. Years later, she took on a new challenge in Ammonite, a film that allowed her to explore a different kind of love story. This time, she played Mary Anning, a 19th century paleontologist who develops a relationship with another woman, played by Sawirsha Ronan. It was a role that demanded a different kind of vulnerability, one that required her to navigate the nuances of a same-gender relationship at a time when such love was hidden in the shadows. For Winslade, this wasn't just about portraying a character. It was about stepping into a part of history, bringing to life a story that had often been overlooked. Yet, despite the depth and historical significance of Ammonite, much of the media attention centered on her love scenes with Ronan. Winslade found this focus frustrating, and rightfully so. She's spoken out about how tired she is of the double standards in Hollywood. When male actors take on intimate roles, they're celebrated for their bravery, but when women do it, it often becomes the main talking point, as though the entirety of the film boils down to a few minutes of physicality. Winslade felt the weight of this scrutiny, and it annoyed her. Here she was, giving everything to bring a complicated, layered woman to life, yet the questions seemed to revolve around the love scenes, not the story itself. But Winslade didn't let that take away from what she knew was a powerful role. She embraced the character of Mary Anning with the same dedication and grit she's brought to every role, making Ammonite not just a film, but a statement about the different forms love can take. She's always been willing to step into characters that ask hard questions, that dig into the truth of who we are as people. It's why she's never been afraid to stray from the Hollywood formula, to take on parts that don't fit neatly into any box. For Winslade, acting is about exploration, about stepping into someone else's shoes and walking around in them until she understands their world. Through her choices, Winslet has crafted a career that refuses to be defined by any single role or genre. She's not afraid to go to those places that make her uncomfortable, because she knows that's where the most meaningful stories live. And that's why we continue to watch her, to cheer for her, and to be moved by the characters she brings to life. She's shown us time and again that stepping out of your comfort zone 
is where the real magic happens. So, what are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments below.